you're looking at the real possibility that you could be in the minority. Do you think that's a real possibility? Well, it's always a possibility, but I, I think in the last two weeks we've been heartened because the polls are turning in our favor. We've gone from what was a debate on national issues in many states, mm -hmm. a debate about Affordable Care Act, a debate about the president, and now it's come down to the candidates. And we have strong candidates, incumbent Democrat senators and challengers. And as a consequence, we're up in the polls. This last week was a lot better than the week before. But it's an indication. We have six or seven weeks to go, and things could get better or worse. It's going to be close. I think we'll retain our majority. Let's talk about your opponent. You had some very sharp differences when it came to the Walgreens situation. Um, he says that you were using the power and the strength of the federal government to intimidate. Walgreens um, financially. Uh, what is your take on that situation? I got a nice letter from the village of Deerfield thanking me when it came to Walgreens for keeping that business in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. I think that's a senator's responsibility to work to keep businesses in this state and to keep them in this country and that's what I set out to do. What Walgreens came to learn was that a consumer company ought to think twice about renouncing their American citizenship their customers were getting ready to walk. And I think they came to realize that. As I went around the city, around the state, people would come up to me and volunteer. I'll never set foot in one of their uh, pharmacies again if they pick up and leave. At every level, working people all the way up to people well-to-do. So there was a strong consumer sentiment. Now here comes my opponent, and he's saying, oh, you shouldn't do this. There's a reason why he's saying that. Jim Oberweiss is a walking inversion. He had an interview in the Sun-Times with Lynn Sweet last November. And it was an interview about what was going on with his residence in Florida. Right. Well, I know what was going on, and he does too. You see, in 2010, Jim Oberweiss, for the first time in 10 years, stopped declaring his home in Kane County as his permanent residence. Why would he stop doing that? Because he bought a condo, a penthouse condo in Bonita Springs, Florida. And in order to get what he calls tax advantages in Florida, he couldn't claim Illinois as his permanent residency for tax purposes. Now he gets the benefits of a permanent residency in Florida. So what are those benefits? Tax advantages, for example, there's no income tax, no state income tax in Florida. That's an example he used. Jim Oberweiss has refused to disclose his Illinois state income tax returns. And the obvious question is, out of the million dollar plus salary last year, how much do you pay Illinois income tax on? I think it's a question you ought to answer. I disclose all my income tax and returns. schedules included. Schedules included, which is an important part of it. Uh, and I've done that every year I've been in public life. It discloses my income, the income of my wife, all of my dependent kids when they were living at home. And I think that's what public servants should do. So at the state fair, Jim Overweis got on that stage and he started saying, you know, tell millionaire Dick, Dick Durbin to go home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do you think that's ironic that he's... It is ironic because what he's done is to compare my wife and my life savings, which when you mm -hmm. add in all the things we've been able to save, come to slightly over a million dollars. And I'm not saying that we're poor by any measure. We're just fine. And I have no complaints there. He wants to compare that to the fact that his, his entire income last year was greater than my net worth. The amount he's put into this campaign so far is right there nearer what we've saved for the entirety of our lives. We're not wealthy, but we're not complaining. You know, we are lucky uh, to have saved a lot of money over the years, raised our kids and helped pay for their education. But to compare my situation in life with Oberweiss of Oberweiss Dairy, that's an exaggeration. To people who say that you went to Washington, you weren't a millionaire, and you, right. you are now, you're, you're saying that's just from savings? Exactly. And not that's from exactly any benefit from being in Washington no. all these years? everything disclosed. I worked for Paul Simon, uh, and he said, uh, the minute I came on his staff in 1969, we're going to make a full income disclosure, every mm -hmm. employee on my staff, and all of our income tax returns every year. People may question our judgment on issues, but they'll never think that we're in this for the money. And I've done it every year. In some years, it's painful, you know? Mm -hmm. When I first got out of law school, it was all student loans. I mean, I was technically bankrupt. It was all student loans. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we've done it every year, and I believe in that. And I think when you do that, uh, and people come back and say, well, just how did you do that? How did you end up with these savings? Mm -hmm. I can point to it year by year. And what we did was save our income.
and uh, put it away and invest it in, in retirement accounts, as most Americans do. What do you think of the, the governor's race? Um, interesting race, and it's going to be an interesting contest because we have two very wealthy candidates for senator and governor, Oberweiss and Rauner. Mm -hmm. And as I've said before, I don't hold it against anybody that they're wealthy if they earned it honestly, and I believe both of them did. I have no reason uh, not to believe that. Uh, and as I've said, you know, I'm only one Powerball ticket away from having the same amount of money <laughs> they do. But here's the point I don't get. How can you be that well off and comfortable and say, I'm opposed to raising the minimum wage? And Ober Mr. Oberweiss has gone to an extreme. He now says, if you try to raise the minimum wage for anyone under the age of 26, it's against the law. What are you thinking, Jim? I mean, they may be ice cream dippers to you, but these are college students working their way through school. These are single moms raising kids. They're veterans coming back. And you're saying, nope, don't raise their minimum wage because they haven't reached the age of 26. Do you think that has something to do with him not wanting to pay the people he's hiring? Well, I know businesses? what he pays. He starts, most of them uh, that are dipping the ice cream at Oberweiss Dairies are starting with a training wage below the minimum wage for our state, and then they're graduated to the minimum wage. I've said to him, incidentally, uh, we make disclosure of the salaries of all the people in our office, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that he will make a similar disclosure of those who work for Oberweiss Dairy. Let's find out from the top down how many women are working there and what people are paid. Uh, I've made a public disclosure of that. Let's see if he'll do the same. They've tried to jump on that public disclosure and say that you don't have as many women. Can you clarify that? There that was a blogger, situation? listen to this, a blogger in Washington writes this and it's just plain wrong. And so we sent the information to the Washington Times which has its own political uh, bent uh, and they ignore it. And so they start running radio ads against me on this. We contact the stations and say, here are the facts. This ad is just plain wrong. And they say, well, since he's produced a Washington Times article supporting his position, we're going to run the ad. We've got the facts, and we're disclosing these facts, and I hope that he will disclose them. I might add, instance, he does two things. He has the dairy and Oberweiss Securities. When you take a close look at Oberweiss Securities, uh, you really need a flashlight to find any women at the highest levels of management in his company. You're calling on him to... Full disclosure. Full disclosure, wa wages and... Men and women. And, and men the and highest women. levels. Let's take the top ten employees each place. Mm -hmm. How much they're paid. How many are men, how many are women. We've done that. And let's say how many men and how many women work for each of these entities and what's the comparable pay. Mm -hmm. I can tell you the answer. Six out of the ten top employees in my office are women. And when it comes to my staff, more uh, women than men, and the women on average make more money than the men. Would you directly tell him, like, hey, you should raise the min you should raise your own minimum wage in your stores? Absolutely. I mean, he ought to know the reality of this, mm -hmm. that many of the people who are working in these stores can't get by at $8.25 an hour. I believe that people who get up and go to work and are willing to you know, make that sacrifice, make that commitment, ought to have some respect. And respect means a decent wage. What do you think about the, the African-American support? Um, he's had a couple of press conferences on different Sundays with, with different pastors mm -hmm. coming out behind him. Um, you know, a couple of them have said, well, look, Democrats aren't doing anything for us. I don't believe that any party is entitled to any vote. You earn it mm -hmm. uh, by the positions you take, by your values, and by your record. Uh, there have been two notable members of uh, African-American ministers who have come forward to endorse my opponent. There are thousands, at least hundreds, in the city of Chicago. These two have come forward, and it's a novelty that an African-American minister is going to endorse publicly a Republican candidate for the Senate. One of them said it's because of Oberweiss's views on economic development. I would like a chance to speak to that minister, and even his congregation, about my viewpoint. I support increasing the minimum wage. Jim Oberweiss opposes it. I support sensible gun control. Jim Oberweiss is the preferred candidate of the National Rifle Association. He opposes uh, most of the background checks that I support uh, to keep guns out of the hands of felons and mentally unstable people. So when you're talking about violence in these neighborhoods, I've been there for a long time for sensible gun control, respecting the rights of people under the Second Amendment to own guns legally, use them safely, store them safely, but also saying we have an obligation to keep guns out of the hands of people who misuse them. Ober, Mr. Oberweiss is in a totally different place. I wonder if he's given that speech 
to these ministers. You said that there's hundreds of ministers, in, you know, on the south side. Do you have a good relationship? I do, with them? and I've been visiting with them. A lot of old friends, uh, and a lot of folks that I'm coming to know during the course of the campaign. Uh, I had a, in a meeting uh, this last Monday, 30 or 40 of these ministers, without my solicitation, came forward and endorsed me. I, I don't. I will tell you this: uh, if Mr. Oberweis wants this battle fought among African Americans in Chicago or in Cook County, be my guest.